Joining us now is OGOP with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jennings. A week-long sing-song voice. <laughs> Good morning and happy Friday, Dr. Yes, Abati. Thank God it's Friday. TGIF, you know how I get to Ndua Viola. You're so giddy on Friday. So and happy. this Friday... Is especially giddy. Very special for yes. me. It's my birthday tomorrow. Yes. 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 Good morning, Rufai. How are you? You, you, you have yeah, the same know, birthday. You know it has yes. yes. That's why the and I'm, is on a Saturday. But you know and, I'm up for the I challenge. And I have to tell you, you have the same birthday as my favorite person in the world. <laughs> William Shakespeare. Of course. Yes. Only yes. special people. Mind. By the way, today is the Queen's birthday, right? Yes. No, it was yesterday. Was it yesterday? It was yesterday. We celebrated her yesterday. Tomorrow, William Shakespeare and OG. Voila. <laughs> Look at you, Rufa. Rufa, you're early April, but I'll give you a pass. I'll give you a pass. Yeah, so yes. Yes. Okay, Jennings. Well, well, we're looking right. for the implications. Should I fast for three days before? The... No need, no need. No okay. Need. Special implication no, for you. Yeah, you know what I asked for. <laughs> yes. We know, we know what you like. You don't need to fast. Well, all right. Good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, President Joe Biden pledged an additional $1.3 billion on Thursday for new weapons and economic assistance to help Ukraine in its battle against Russia's invasion as he disputed Russian President Vladimir Putin's claim to have liberated the besieged city of Mariupol. Today, I'm announcing another $800 million to further augment Ukraine's ability to fight in the east in the Donbass region. This package includes heavy artillery weapons, dozens of howitzers, and 144,000 rounds of ammunition to go with those howitzers. And President Vladimir Zelensky was named among five people on Thursday, chosen as recipients of the John F. Kennedy Profiling Change Award for acting to protect democracy, while the four others, Republican Liz Cheney, Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson, Arizona House Speaker Rusty Bowers and elections worker Wandria Shane Moss were chosen for standing up for free and fair elections in the United States. In the United Kingdom, 95-year-old Sir David Attenborough was honored with the Champions of the Earth Lifetime Achievement Award by the United Nations Environment Program in recognition of his dedication to the natural world and climate change. Attenborough's career as a broadcaster, natural historian, author, and environmental advocate spans over seven decades. He is most famous for his work with the BBC's Natural History Unit. Honor Sports Former Chelsea FC forward Didier Drogba, former Manchester City striker Sergio Aguero, and former Manchester United midfielder Paul Scholes on Thursday were inducted into the English Premier League Hall of Fame. The trio, alongside Vincent Company, Ian Wright and Peter Schmeichel, are the latest inductees into the EPL Hall of Fame, which was launched in 2021 as the highest individual honor awarded to players in the Premier League. Finally, under entertainment, Alec Baldwin's lawyer on Thursday said the investigation by New Mexico's Occupational Health and Safety Bureau cleared his client of wrongdoing in the fatal shooting on the set of Rust, pointing out that its report stated that the actor believed his gun held only dummy rounds. The Safety Bureau on Wednesday released the findings of a six-month investigation of the shooting during the filming of the Western movie last October. Cinematographer Helena Hutchins was killed during a rehearsal when a revolver that Baldwin was holding fired a live round that passed through her and struck the movie's director, Joel Souza, in the shoulder. Well, let's begin what's trending with comments made by the National Security Advisor, Babagana Mungono, who on Thursday said intelligence operations of security agencies against bandits are not for public consumption. Mongono spoke on Thursday while addressing journalists after a meeting with President Mohamed Buhari and service chiefs at the presidential villa. He was responding to questions on a recent comment made by Nasiru El Rufai, governor of Kaduna State, in which he alleged that the camps and phone numbers of the bandits are known by the security agencies and had asked the military to bomb bandits' hideouts instead of waiting for them to attack. 
Governor Nasser El Rufai spoke about um, the security agencies saying we know who they are, where they are. And again, that is the danger when you start talking too much. You give away a lot. I agree. Now, even if they say we know where they are, that in itself is already a problem. Because once you say it, whether it is true or false, the person who has your people in captivity will move to another location. It's just as simple as that. So sometimes it's best to just keep silent. Mum is the word. Well, like he said, sometimes rebuttals are dangerous. I mean, I don't know how uh, this rebuttal has actually even gotten him into trouble. Um, let's take a tweet from David, who said, so ridiculous and laughable. NSA, thank you. But the strategic information and advice given to the federal government, if properly followed and implemented by now, we will be celebrating freedom from banditry atrocities. Let's stop the rebuttal blaming and take responsibility. Hmm. Tundu Abiola. Well, I guess maybe the NSA is referring to Sun Tzu about how you have to mystify, mislead, and surprise the enemy. You mustn't let them see you coming. But if all was above board and if all was being handled properly, a person like the governor of Kaduna would not feel the need to make that outburst Absolutely. that he made. And it's quite an understandable outburst that he did say because we're all completely flummoxed by the lack of progress in this war against terror. And nobody can blame a governor of a state where his people are being killed, they're being abducted, so I'm just trying to offer some helpful hints. Since you guys haven't a clue what you're doing, that's why he's trying to help you. So I really see nothing wrong with what the governor said. And the NSA's rebuttal, I guess he would have to feel the need to say something in response, but it's really quite unconvincing. Earlier on in the show, we talked about the fact that he, the NSA, mentioned that there are rogue elements within the security yes. forces. And it's not enough, personally for me, and I'm sure many other Nigerians, it's not enough for the NSA to say that there are rogue elements. Number one, that's the obvious statement of the century. Number two, if you know that they're rogue elements, then you weed them out, you prosecute them, you do something, not just say, oh, they're rogue elements and they're frustrating our efforts. It's really completely ridiculous at this point. Right. Dr. Abbasi. What exactly did Governor Rufai say? What he said following the March 28 uh, attack on the Kaduna bombed uh, train coming from Abuja in the evening was that, look, the security situation in Kaduna State and across the country was becoming too serious. And he accused the military authority, authorities of not doing enough. He said Tucano jets had not been deployed. And then he added that, look, we should not be waiting for these terrorist bandits to attack people before government, the military will react or the police will react. Because he says, as in his position as the chief security officer of Kaduna State, he gets reports from the Department of State Security in his state. And they tell him that they know the location mm -hmm. of the bandits. They have their phone numbers. They listen to their conversation. And he was saying, so what are the soldiers? What, what is the military establishment doing? And he even threatened at the time that he will have a special meeting with the president of Nigeria to draw his attention to the failure of the operational and intelligence agencies. Don't forget that we were told that there was prior intelligence before that attack on that train. Nobody acted. So yesterday, uh, General Baba Ghana Munguno was telling us that uh, the president was disappointed. He, he expressed frustration with the performance of the, uh, uh, of the uh, military agencies, security agencies, long before the president, the governor, who is a man institute, the man who is there and who knows where the two pinches. I'd also express similar disappointment and frustration. So what are we talking about? The National Security Advisor, who had even been recommended for removal yes. by the House of Reps. The, the House of Reps was the second level where disappointment and frustration was expressed. Now he's blaming uh, uh, Nasir Rufai, the governor of Kaduna State. I think the governor has no blame. Uh, in this matter. If you are governor of a state where every uh, flank of the state is being attacked and you cannot get any help. It, the man became so frustrated, he was even talking about getting mercenaries. Yes, he did. Forgetting, because I think he has a degree in law, forgetting that uh, you know the, the, the relevant laws do not give him the powers 
to recruit a mercenary so on his own. If he were to do so, he would be acting ultra virus. Now he's uh, accused of loquaciousness. <laughs> he's accused of uh, windbaggery. Yeah. You know, uh, I think in this particular case, no, the Nasir Rufai's uh, uh, statement was a cry for help. Yeah. And it is important that the National Security Advisor and his team, uh, that they listen to this cry, not even from uh, Nasir Rufai. Uh, who was that governor that was weeping on television the other day? One governor wept. I think it was the governor of Benue State. Governors are weeping, governors are talking, and then the only response they get is that they, they should not talk too much. No, we, because yeah. you could jeopardize the security of the kidnapped victims. How many kidnapped victims? Have the security people been able to rescue? But we're not even asking for their operational menu or anything. Just do your job. We're not asking you to publicize what Fair it is enough. that you're doing. We just want you to do your job. You Rufai. See, you see, Nigeria is a... <laughs> I laugh. Nigeria is a pantomime show. Life in vernacular. Let me say. I swear. Vernacular. Don't oh. laugh in English. <laughs> <laughs> Nigeria is a, it's an awadakeri keri situation. Real comic strip. Pantomime, <laughs> National Security Advisor, does not give one advice. Eh? One advice to end all of these problems. Excuse me, he wrote a memo. <laughs> he wrote a memo. Does not give one advice to end all of these problems. He just says somebody should not talk. National Security Advisor says uh, state government talks too much. He's telling Nasir Rufai, Meshionu. Eh? And they are going back off and forth. Mic. He's telling and he's, off mic. He's saying off your mic. <laughs> eh? And they're killing the man in the state, oh, he say off your mind. He say when they kill everybody in Kaduna, he say off your mind. He say, he say bandits are running around. See, Yorubas have a saying. If you cook stew in the shell of groundnuts and make pounded yam on leaves, the person that will be full will be full. When we are ready to end this security orgy, we will end it. I don't think we are ready yet. Because all of this is just a show of shame. Is this not the same country? Some people say there, no, when they attacked the Kaduna airport first, they, because those attacks were systematic, they started with the airport. You know how some people rebuff the story? In fact, I saw some military officers go to show us where the bandits were strolling. They said, no, they were just strolling. They were passing by. They were it's, along. It's, it's five <laughs> kilometers away from the perimeter. <laughs> they just happened to be ambling they, along there. They, they were just strolling. It's five kilometers away from the perimeter. Yeah, lucky robbers. You can't even call the uh, airport attack an attack. An, an attack. attack. You can't call it an yeah, attack. That's what he said. All of a sudden, I'm sure the one that happened with the Kaduna uh, train bombing now, it's just few kilometers equidistant of the train track. When we are ready to end insecurity, we will end it. So unfair. But now, people should keep doing circus show with the lives of people, Oji. That is my priority. The lives of innocent people that are dying, that are being kidnapped as a result of all this. With all the information we have, we can't rescue the people that are trapped there. And you are saying people should not talk. So are we saying we don't have enough surveillance to be able to pick out where the bandits are with these people? Or it is going to over 25 days now since this has happened. Nothing is happening. And the National Security Advisor, when you wonder the quality of advice he's been given, it too has the mouth of citizenship. Let's continue. This but God so did. God, God is watching all of us for, with everybody. All the things we do in this life will give account one day. Let's continue. God has no blame in this matter. No, I'm just saying he's watching all of us. Because before, before some people will now say that we should pray to God for divine intervention. When God has given us the brain. Eh? But God is watching all of us. Everybody, God is watching us from a distance. Well said, everyone. We'll take another story that has been trending all over social media. First Lady Aisha Buhari has come under fire for inviting all presidential aspirants from various political parties to an iftar dinner at the State House Conference Center. Well, in an invitation letter that has now gone viral on social media, invitees were instructed not to come along with their mobile devices except for their invitation cards, which would serve as an entry pass. While some Nigerians have criticized the First Lady, saying that she lacked the moral or constitutional authority to summon or invite the presidential aspirants. Let's take some tweets. Well, this is someone called Nigerian, Nigerian Eagle, uh, says Aisha Buhari, 
who does not even live in Nigeria, comes back and invites presidential aspirants to a dinner. Phones not allowed, except for the VP and those who are ministers. Peter Obi, please avoid such gathering. You have us. You have nothing to lose. Well, Reno Mockery wrote, I don't know about other aspirants, but I can assure you and assure Nigerians that Atiku Abubakar will never attend this event or any other summons disguised as an invite by Aisha Buhari. Imagine the audacity. Phones are not allowed. Is Aisha herself allowed? I mean, this is so ridiculous. I, don't, I mean, this is standard <laughs> protocol. We have to clear this out. Phones are usually not allowed. I mean, what is all of this? Why are people just attacking this invitation the way that they are? I mean, in terms of the phone idea. But I guess Nigerians are just frustrated. And rightfully so, because she hardly comes out to speak. And she has not really occupied that office in a while. And, you know, we just hear from her every now and then. And then, you know, this invitation of all presidential aspirants just seems a bit, um, you know, confusing for a lot of Nigerians to do. Yeah, OJ, I agree with you on the aspects about the phones. I think that's really much ado yeah. about nothing. Yeah. It's a security risk. Phones are not allowed. You recall even Donald Trump banning yes. White House staffers from having their phones because there were leaks that ended up in a book. That tends to happen. Phones are not allowed in banking halls in some countries. That used to be the case in Nigeria. That's been lifted also for a security risk. But I think for a lot of people, it's the seeming high-handedness of it. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm really quite pedantic about election campaign promises, and here I go again. We were told we're not going to have a first lady. We were told we were not going to have that. In response to the perceived or actual excesses of the first lady of um, good luck Jonathan, um, his wife, Dame Patience Jonathan. So this is what we were told in Nigeria. So it does seem somewhat, yes, high-handed is the word I'd use, for her to be summoning political aspirants. But it's not a summons. I don't think it's a summons. It's I think it's a nice yeah, invitation. Yeah. They even had a nice little print out. And I think she's actually trying to do them a favor by telling them not to bring their phones. Because if they do bring their phones, their phones will be taken from them. They will be relieved of their phones. And then any kind of accusation could then follow. And they could be accused of maybe have planted um, spyware on the phones. That could be some kind of, kind of a scandal. So I think she's trying to just help them out by saying, look, leave your phones at home. But I take it not as a summons. It's an actual invitation. And it's common at this time of the year with Iftar. People invite all kinds of people to join them yeah. in breaking their fast. Maybe she's trying to just create an atmosphere of peace and calm before the strum and drang of the campaigns when they fully kick off. I'm sure her heart's in the right place. Well, well. You know, I commented on this yesterday, yeah. and I used the word a summon. You used summon? Yes, because oh, okay. of the subtext of it. Mm -hmm. This is the wife of the president trying to use an office that does not really exist in law uh, to intimidate you know, presidential aspirants. The question you should ask is, why presidential aspirants? <laughs> why presidential aspirants across party lines? OK? The excuse that may be given is that, well, during Ramadan season, it's a period of uh, reflection, sharing of fellowship, and uh, you know, reaching out to the underprivileged and all that. I guess pre presidential aspirants are underprivileged at, it, at, it, at this time because they are all looking for something that they are not sure of. Maybe a dinner with the uh, first lady will help them, you know, give them a little more energy to be able to pursue uh, their ambition. But in any case, the question still remains, why presidential aspirants? That's the question. Why is she not inviting the, the usual, uh, uh, you know, uh, supporters of her cause, the wives of the uh, governors of the states? Why is she not inviting, you know, uh, some other prominent female Muslims to come and have the iftar uh, with her? So, I, uh, if you go beyond that, the same question remains. Why presidential aspirants? Is uh, Mrs. Warren not seeing uh, a political ambition? you know, after the husband leaves office. Because it will, be, it will seem to be a strategic move. Because if the husband leaves office in uh, February, and she has established solidarity with presidential aspirants, uh, people have eaten her food. Even <laughs> if it is Nigerian food, uh, in state house that will provide the food. Maybe she will have a better access to that, because she will have planned ahead. Mm. You know, these are some of the issues mm. from the point of view of strategy. Let these that. presidential aspirants know. So I, I guess that's why people you know, I've expressed outrage yeah. about this. The third thing, of course, is that some of the aspirants, their aides have reported that they have not received the invitation. And the <laughs> event is supposed to uh, tomorrow. be tomorrow evening. Yeah, tomorrow evening. So I think it will be very embarrassing 
if the uh, first lady uh, doesn't get enough representation on the grounds that, oh, we did not get the invitation uh, card. Okay? So, but you never know. Now that they, that is in the public domain, maybe today they will, she will personally follow up with her phone calls, and then it will become a summon. <laughs> And uh, uh, you know all of these people can go there and go and uh, and go and have dinner with the uh, uh, president's wife, and I'm sure she will give a speech. She will deliver a speech and talk to them. I hope she will talk, give them a lecture about the future of Nigeria and what uh, she as first lady wants. So we'll see how it goes. We are watching. We are waiting. I know you are. You are definitely watching and waiting. That's what I'm saying. And I hope they will serve your love rice. You know, you know, you know, I'm laughing. They don't do the outrageous. Because this country is a, it's a, it's a joke. It's just, it's just a joke. See, but some people are making it like a joke. What is, what is, under what, what powers? See? Okay, I'm leaving. You're just calling everybody. Come and eat. Come and eat. Come and eat. Nigerians are hungry. Nigerians are hungry. Those are the pertinent problems on ground. You see, we, we talk as and we do things as do. We don't even have the feelings of people. Like they've stated constitutionally, there's no role of the first lady. And you are calling presidential as well. If I would take register of the presidential aspirants that go there, Nigerians are watching We're you. We're watching. <laughs> presidential aspirants, if you go there, we'll be writing your name down. All right. We'll deal with you in the polls. All right. Oh, we shall take our final no, story. Have <laughs> I have one vote. We only have four. Four cards. We'll deal yes. with you in the polls. <laughs> well, let the people of Nigeria decide that. All right, we shall take our final story in the United States with this viral video showing boxing legend Mike Tyson throwing punches at a fellow passenger on a JetBlue flight from San Francisco to Florida, leaving the man with a bloodied forehead. While well, the incident was said to have occurred on Wednesday, April 20th, when the overly excited passenger asked Mike Tyson for a selfie and then kept trying to talk to the 55-year-old fighter as he sat behind him. Let's take a look. Talk to your boss, talk to my boss. This is George talking to Mike Tyson, bro. This shit crazy, bro. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! Just trying to ask for an autograph, man. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry, this is cracking me up. I didn't think I was going to even laugh after this. But, I mean, what can we say? Lesson learned, right? This is why these people go around with bodyguards. Why are you... Why are you doing that to a fighter, a boxer? You know his outrage. You know, you know Mike Tyson. How could you do okay, that to Mike Tyson? We have to go now. Yes, we, do we? No, oh, I thought there Thank was time. I indeed. thought there was time to no. chat yeah. about this. Well, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I know um, you will. Yes, I will. Yeah. Absolutely. Enjoy your birthday party tomorrow. Shop, 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 shop. Thank you. Shop, shop, shop. Do, do, you want, do you want me to come? No. <laughs> go to the dinner. Go to the, the iftar dinner. <laughs> I've not been invited. I'm not Go the presidential aspirant. Go to the state house. I'm not yet. The dinner. Maybe in the you future. You guys should have talked about my tights and stuff. My birthday. What? Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Janet. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you all next week.